Welcome back to the book of Exodus this morning, Exodus 15, verses 4 to 7. We're in the middle of the Song of Moses here, and we're going to break it up into several parts. I'm not going to try to use any fancy, careful breakup here. We're just going to plow through day by day, but I have done been looking. There's a lot of people that say a lot of different things about how you might organize this, but we're just going to chop through. So let's take those verses. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea, and the choicest of his officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deeps cover them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. And the, in the greatness of your excellence, you overthrow those who rise up against you. You send forth your burning anger, and it consumes them as chaff. So the best that Pharaoh came up with here, wiped out, wiped out. And there's kind of a humanistic line here in the, in the Pharaoh and his Egypt, Egypt representing the world. I mean, we're talking about actual historical events. 14 is, you know, the, the prose version and 15 is kind of the praise version. This is the song version. But God defeated his enemies, and he did it so so effortlessly. How do you think you can win against the infinite God, God who is love? And then your your plan is oppress, destroy, uh, make myself the biggest thing. That's not going to win. And and here we see kind of an illustration worked out in the actual history of planet Earth, an illustration of how God always prevails. You cannot evil cannot defeat good. Good is the ultimate. Uh, all these other things are something less. They're less than God is. They're less than God designed humans to be. And so why don't we come up to the line instead of work our way down towards the bugs? Why don't we come up towards God? Why don't we let him fulfill our potential in us? Why don't we cooperate with him so that that happens? So yes, the sea covered them. They were wiped out. If, resisting God was futile, and yet they resisted, and here they got the fruit of their resistance. There's also something in this song, and we'll see more of it as we carry on through, but God is protecting his people. God does not just leave his people to dangle in the wind. Now, sometimes, yeah, sometimes you look around, and you're in the middle of a crisis, and you feel very alone. You feel like, where is God? Well, and, and God is, is watching over you, but Boy, there's a lot more for us to do than we usually think. And so he's trying to call us up and call out our, our gifts and call out our abilities. We should exercise our abilities. I mean, hey, God didn't make us, you know, he could have made us all little, little, little balls. You know, we could be little in uh, sentient balls that, that uh, roll this way and roll that way. Uh, depending on which way the wind blows. But instead, God gave us arms and legs and fingers and toes. God has things for us to do. And so his people, he is delivering them, the whole person, including the feet, including the toes, and that can walk out of Egypt. But Pharaoh's, but Pharaoh's plan to simply oppress and re-enslave and bring them back, God isn't going to go for that. God is on your side. He's on my side. And he has big plans for us. I wish we had big plans for us, but let's go to the Bible and see what God's large plans for us are, and then we'll be blessed, and the world will also be blessed. God bless you. See you tomorrow morning.